This is Las Vegas, the richest city for its size in the world. For the tourist, this is a showplace featuring great stars, beautiful girls, and gambling. Daily, the vaults of the gambling casinos are being filled with hard, cold cash. Roughly several million dollars of it every week of every year. Roughly, too, there are several million amateur or professional gamblers trying to get their hands on some of it. One of these was this man, Charles Chuck Wheeler, released from San Quentin Penitentiary in California on November the 28th. His method for getting the money, however, had nothing to do with gambling. Early every morning, the cash receipts from the gambling casinos are taken from the casino vaults and loaded into a small armored car for transport to a local bank. To a man such as Chuck Wheeler, known to police as a slick and ingenious crook who had planned successful bank and payroll robberies, this money presented tremendous opportunity. Wheeler's intensive planning for the robbery meant securing the right team of Confederates to work with him. Included in his plan was this man, Joe Darren, although Darren didn't know it. On the morning of December 19, Joe Darren and his bodyguard were on their way to Los Angeles for a quick business trip. This was a moment for which Wheeler had been waiting. Darren, a big time operator in various black markets, was known to be dangerous. Wheeler could make no mistakes. He had to be right the first time. <laughs> Darren's in a hurry. Can you put the spare on right away? Sure, take about 10 minutes. We'll get a cup of coffee. Call us when you're through. Right. That was a brand new tire and a special tube, Tony. How do you figure it could blow? Might have been a defect in the carcass. Maybe. We'll take it with us. When we get back to Las Vegas tonight, I want you to look it over. Carefully. Right. I can't understand it, Steve. Why does it happen? That's the third car in two weeks. I looked all over that road out there. There's nothing wrong with it. Funny part of it all is it always seems to happen right in the same spot. I better go serve their coffee. A trailer court on the outskirts of Las Vegas served as Wheeler's headquarters for the robbery. Here, he was to recruit his gang. He had already secured the services of a man named Lou Largo, a petty criminal on the run from the police. Sure. Darren never knew what hit that front tire, and before he stopped skidding, he was almost in the garage. <laughs> you ready to go to work on him? Yeah. Is the set ready? Yeah, sure, sure. All finished. I think I'll start things going tonight. You gonna see the girl? Sure. You sure she'll see you? She has no choice. No choice at all. Appearing at a local nightclub owned by Joe Darren, was a girl Wheeler wanted to contact. As it was with Darren, she was to become a part of the robbery, though at this moment, she was unaware that a man named Chuck Wheeler even existed. You want? 
want love, you've got love. I'm more than glad to be the giver. Just say the word and I'll deliver anything your heart desires. You want thrills, you've got thrills. My arms, my lips are here to thrill you. It's at my fingertips to will you anything your heart desires. Any dreams you set your sights on, yours is but to tell me each. Mine is but to turn the lights on, put them all in your reach. So tease me, or squeeze me, but treat me right and you'll discover that I can be your slave or lover, anything your heart desires. magic lamp you hold waiting for your life to gladden yours to do as i'm told cause i want what you want i only hope you understand now your slightest wish is my command now your whole future's at stake it's make all machines everybody because tomorrow they could set off another atom bomb out of frenchman's flats and las vegas might get blown into a state where they don't allow gambling <laughs> see you later <laughs> Regards for you. From Mike. Who are you? Name's Wheeler. Your husband and I shared the same room at college. Mike out of the pen? No. I graduated a few weeks ago. He's still up there waiting for his diploma from the uh, parole board. All right, what do you want? Well, Mike asked me to give him a message. Like what? <laughs> You? Oh, nothing personal, honey. You wrote to him asking for a divorce, and he asked me to give you his answer. You threw. No. Oh. I have a message for you, too. I got your message. No wonder Mike can't get you out of his mind. That picture he has of you in the cell doesn't even come close. You want to examine the merchandise, Wheeler? Do it out front. With the rest of the customers. Mike thinks you're just working here for Darren. What's that supposed to mean? The sign outside said you've been held over five months. I've been watching the way things are with you and Darren. I don't blame him for holding you over. That's your business, too. You are. I've got to get to Darren, and you can swing it for me. Could I? What do you want with him? It's a long story. Call him on the phone. You're getting the idea. Darren doesn't deal with ex-cons. What do you expect me to do about it? Whisper in his ear, soft and low. You're crazy. He won't listen to me. Tell him I got a deal that'll make him rich. You? I'll make it easy for you. Ask him how he got that blowout on the road to L.A. this morning. 
Get yourself another messenger, girl. You know, I feel sorry for Mike losing you. I'm not sorry enough. You're going to feel sorry, all right. Joe Darren will hear about this. I figured he would. You know, I spent a lot of time with Mike in that cell. I had to look at your picture every day, too. Tell Darren he can reach me at Huggins Trailer Court. Mr. Darren there, this is by Victor. It's important. Sure, I'll call him. I got in my dressing room tonight. He started to get rough. He made a pass at me. Who is he? You got his name? Wheeler? Chuck Wheeler? No, I never met him, but I know the name. He said he was in jail with Mike. And he has some kind of a big deal for you. Yes. And he said to make sure I ask you how you got that tire blowout on the road to L.A. this morning. Tire? Did he say where I could get hold of him? Huggins trailer court, huh? Now, okay, bye. I'll look up your friend. He won't like it, but I'll look him up. See, baby, no muss, no fuss. You said you were going to be at that trailer court. Sure. We don't want to disappoint anybody. Let's go. Maybe you won't be so happy when he catches up with you. Some people take out insurance policies. I like to take you out. Get in there. Where are we going? Get in. <laughs> You're my insurance policy. Now tell Darren you're here with me. Door's open, Chuck. Speak up, nice and clear. Joe? It's Vi. I'm with Wheeler. We talk, Darren, or she gets messed up. Tell your muscle boy to put away his brass knuckles. All right, Wheeler, we talk. I hope he feeds you to the fish. Turn on the lights. Look, Turn on the lights! Turn it on, Tony. It's better. Now, we can all see what we're doing, huh? I, uh, don't like having a gun being held on me, Wheeler. And I don't like a cheap gunsel waiting for me in the dark. Tony will do as I say. Okay. What do you want with her? She has to hear what I have to say, same as you. Have I told me something about a big deal you got? Darren, between us, we can walk away with nearly two million dollars. But I'm gonna need help. Two million's a lot of money, Wheeler. He talks real big. Yeah. What about the blowout I had on the road this morning, hmm? I shot your tire out from under you. Why'd you do it? I had to. I had to prove it could be done before I talked to you. 
Your car landed exactly where I wanted it to, in front of that motel garage. Three other cars with blowouts landed in the same place. And that's exactly where our $2 million will land when we're ready. Just like that? So simple? Nothing simple. For the past year and a half, I sweated on it in the pen. Mike sweated on it with me, too. That's why he gets a cut of the deal. What's he gonna do with it in the pen? I'll hold it for him. He gets out in three months. I didn't know he was getting out so soon. He's been a good boy. Eighteen months ago, the banks here in Vegas started to use a new armored truck to take the paper money from the casinos here to the Federal Reserve Bank in Los Angeles, where they exchanged it for silver dollars. Twice a week, they make the trip to L.A. Twice a week, they pass the stagecoach in. Why do you need us? Well, the banks here in Vegas keep a list of the serial numbers of the bills they send to L.A. That money wouldn't be worth a dime to us if you couldn't get rid of it in the black market. Mike Bennett say I could do that? Yeah. He said you had connections. We didn't have the key to the whole deal until we found out that Vi was working for you. You still got those connections? Perhaps. All right. Here's the deal. You and your money men get $600,000. Bennett and I split the rest. You said Vi had to know something about this deal. Why? Well, I got Largo, and I need someone in the clear who can help me get information. Now, wait a minute. I'm not getting mixed up in anything like this. Well, I think he knows what he's doing. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Meantime, do what you have to do. I'll make my contact for the exchange of the money and let you know when we can have the meeting. You ought to play along with us, kid. I told you I don't want any part of it. All you got to do is help me get information. Get someone else. We'll talk about it, Vi. Maybe you'll change your mind. See you soon. That dame will never do it, Chuck. It all depends on how much Darren wants that dough. I want to talk to Vi alone. Take a cab back. Sure. Okay, Vi, baby. Now we straighten out a few things, huh? I don't get it. You're doing all right. Why go into the deal? Kids, sometimes things are good, sometimes they're bad. This is one of the bad times. I need money and I need it fast. The club you're working for is in Huck. My luck's run out by. You go along with Vila's idea, and I'll see to it that you get enough to take care of you for the rest of your life. Take care of me? That's right. From here on in, you're on your own. We're not getting married. You lashed on to me because I had money and because I could give you a job, okay? I treated you right. With me, you figured you had everything licked. What did you figure you had? Now look, Vi. Your husband's a trigger-happy con. He gets out soon. I just can't afford that kind of trouble. That's all there is to it. All right, Joe. Maybe it's just as well. I liked you enough to marry you, but love had nothing to do with it. You'd have been shortchanged. You can tell Wheeler to count me in. Joe Darren tell you all about it? Some of the things I had to guess at. Darren brushed you off, huh? Yeah. I saw it coming. It was smeared all over his face when I told him Mike was going to get out pretty soon. You know, Mike told me you were crazy about him once. Once. He killed that. I'm glad he did. Why? You're divorcing Mike. You're getting rid of Darren. I never did like standing in line. <laughs> Nobody owns me now. Nobody's going to. No muss, no fuss. Sure. 
What are you quitting here? As soon as you let me know what I have to do about getting the information you want. I should know by tonight what the first move is going to be. Seems to me you're already making it. I'm waiting for you to stop me. The red light just went on. You waited too long. I meant what I said. I'm out strictly for little old Vi now. Remember that. It might give you something else to think about. I don't mind waiting. As long as I'm the first in line. There. Done. Car 17 at 22. Proceed to 5th and Market at 328. Repeat. At 328. Car 17 at 22. Did fine. Proceed to 5th yeah. and Market. You know, they thought they were teaching me a trade at San Quentin. <laughs> oh, when you want the armored car, tune it in right there. Mm -hmm. And remember, the set isn't very powerful, so you got to be close. We'll be close enough. You uh, going to make the tape tomorrow? On schedule. Now it's time to check. Wheeler had to be absolutely certain of the moment when the robbery would take place. Every time the United Armored Car made its 300-mile run over the desert to Los Angeles, he checked the exact second when the truck passed the stagecoach inn below the hill on which he was hidden. There was no margin for error. He had chosen this remote spot near the California border because it offered the least chance of detection. His notebook became the detailed breakdown of each step of the robbery. The time had arrived for Vi Victor to begin her phase of the operation. Oh, come on in. Nervous? Shaking. You'll be all right. In fact, you think you're getting out of here. Where am I going? At 8 in the morning, bring your car to Delman's tables at the edge of town. Do you know the place? I've passed by it. All right, tell the attendant you're Mrs. Franklin. You've come to pick up a horse trailer your husband ordered by phone. Horse trailer? When they've attached it to your car, bring it to my trailer in the court. You mind telling me what we're doing? We're taking a special trip to L.A. Why? All you've got to know is you're not coming back to Vegas. You're going to check into a little place called the Stagecoach Inn near the California border. What about the rest of you? I don't want to be alone at that motel. Yeah, I'll check in later after I talk to Darren and his money boy. Now, you got it straight? Yes. Well, all right, hurry up. You haven't got that much time. I'll be there at 8. The next morning, as the armored car rolled toward Los Angeles on one of its twice-weekly trips, Vi Victor began her job of helping Wheeler get the information he needed. Hidden in a horse trailer, pulled by Vi's car, Chuck Wheeler was getting ready to make a tape recording of the voice of the armored car radio operator and that of the operator at the police check-in stations. Wheeler's plan for the robbery had to overcome the shortwave radio secret code used by this armored car to communicate with these checkpoints. Coming into Baker. Schedule 902. Schedule 902, check. Check. The calm, unhurried days of the stagecoach inn were numbered. For violence, crime, and murder were to become paying guests. On the morning of December 28th, by Victor, following Wheeler's instructions, checked in at the motel. With her arrival, the $2 million robbery was well on its way. Now she was to begin getting the information Wheeler wanted. says you have a vacancy. More than we like. <laughs> Just for tonight? I'm not sure yet. It may be a few days. I've been traveling so much, I'll be glad to relax. I'll give you one of the cabins in the rear. I'd rather be further front, if possible. Well, you'll get the traffic noise. After living in a city hotel for three years, it'll sound like crickets. <laughs> sure. It's less lonely up front. Come on, I'll show you. 
uh, Steve will be back in about 15 minutes if you want to wait. He's out with the tow truck. Mm -hmm. It was necessary for Vi to have a cabin toward the front so that she would have an unobstructed view of the gas station area and the garage. Thanks. Uh, anything you need, just call us. Everything's fine. My husband will bring in your bags as soon as he gets back. Thanks. I hope you're comfortable. Bye. Goodbye. For the next week, Vi Victor was to keep an accurate account of the times that trucks and cars stopped at the motel, for a large vehicle could block the armored car at the critical moment. was explained in detail to Charles Wong, Darren's money man, who represented a syndicate in Singapore. Now, this is the course the car will follow after I blow its right front tire, right up to the garage. I've already demonstrated to Joe that it can be done. You say you can handle the two guards. What about the driver? He never leaves a bulletproof cab. You won't be able to get him. There's an air vent on top of the armored truck. Tear gas will bring him out, all right? You're a man of great efficiency, Mr. Wheeler. I believe that anybody who goes in with me is entitled to his money's worth. But I'll tell you this. We're going to do something that has never been tried. We're not only going to take the money, we're going to take the truck, too. The truck? Why? That's the only way we can get more time. The truck keeps checking in in code with the cops all along the way. Then how can you take the truck without the proper code? Listen to this. Largo. United calling 42X. United calling 42X. Go ahead, United. As long as the armored truck Somebody keeps up its two-way check-ins along the way, there's no possibility of anybody knowing that it's being stolen. By the time United realizes anything is wrong, we're in L.A. and in the clear. Minor accident at 777, outside Barstow. The hood will be clear by the time you reach there. Now, those are the actual voices of the guard in the armored truck and the checkpoint operator. Gentlemen, I'm prepared to go ahead with the deal. Okay. We'll make the payoff in your warehouse in Los Angeles. Well, gentlemen, next time we see each other will be January 2nd, Wong's warehouse, huh? Wheeler was confident now. Every step of his plan had worked out as he wanted it. A $2 million dream was about to come true. Right after Korea, Steve had just enough money to make a down payment on the motel. It's worked out fine. Most of our bills are paid off. You both must have worked hard. Lots of people work harder. We've had fun making something out of the place. Now Steve's talking about starting a family. Lots of fresh air, good open country, great place to raise kids. Oh, not that I'm trying to give you any ideas. Kind of takes care of the future for you, doesn't it? Well, the future I've got a right to expect. Some people might think they're entitled to more. Oh, the ornaments are always falling off this tree. Mmm, smell the pine. I wish every day was Christmas so I could have one of these around. When I was a kid, I always used to think how clean they smelled. I'd forgotten it. That Christmas tree I smell was always in a department store on Broadway. I even knew the man who played Santa Claus. He was a drunk from the mission house near where I lived. Christmas was the only time he ever sobered up. Have you got any plans for New Year's Eve? 
Uh -uh. I'll be glad just not having to work. Work on New Year's Eve? I've been singing in nightclubs. Nobody listens to you on a night like that. They just want to make their own racket. But you get paid, so you sing. Well, why not see how the other half lives? We have a few friends over for a party. You come, too. Thanks. I'd like it. Right on time. Two of the best coffee customers I have. boys. Usual? Yeah, with a jelly donut, Ann. Oh, man, you're starting your New Year's celebration early. See you later, Ann. I want to get some sun. Okay. Oh, uh, there'll be some new magazines in this afternoon. Mmm. Well, there's a New Year's resolution I'd like to make. Maybe I ought to just move in this place. Huh? Our cabins don't have built-in blondes. Yeah, she may not be built in, but she's sure built. The next night, Wheeler, using an assumed name, arrived at the stagecoach inn, bringing his equipment for the robbery with him. Okay, Mr. Maxwell. Oh, uh, we serve breakfast till 11 in the morning. Anything we can do for you tonight, just give us a call. Fine. Good night. Good night. The time up to Tuesday, January 2nd, the day of the robbery, would be spent in careful checking of every phase of the operation. Wheeler waited until almost two in the morning before daring to leave his cabin to contact by Victor. He had to make sure no one saw him, for he and the girl were supposed to be strangers. It was a moment of great tension for Wheeler. By Victor's information could determine whether the robbery would go ahead on schedule or not. for me? Yes, but something came up. Look at this. Are you sure about the time the cops get here? Yes, they stop by for coffee. Well, that's okay. They get here 22 minutes after we pull the job. Anybody see you make those notes? No, I was careful. So far, everything's made to order. Got any ideas on where you're going to go after you get your cut? No, I'll just try on different places for size. I would imagine you would have big plans for that kind of dough. The biggest one is to die rich. Yeah. You do that. I'll take care of living rich. Stopping right outside. It's Darren. Darren. What are you doing here? You don't know what happened? No. few months left to go for his parole. If he heads this way, he can louse us up. Every cop in Nevada will be on him. With two million bucks waiting for us, he has to blow his top. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we can't stop the job now. You have it in Lago. Better keep him in Las Vegas if he gets there. The cops don't reach him first. Does he know we're going to pull the job here at the motel? No. OK. I'll keep my nice until the job is done. That'll be my end. You take care of this end. And don't mess it up, Wheeler. I need that dough. Mike did this because you wrote to him and said you're going through with the divorce. If he gets to you, he'll kill you. 
He has no right to me. He knows that. Yeah, try telling that to a guy who's just flipped his lid. Oh, I'm afraid, Chuck. He'll find me. He won't give up. Yeah. I'll try to keep him away from you. Look, I'm going to Mexico as soon as this job is done. I'm going to clear out. I've got all the arrangements made. The ticket, nothing's going to change that. If you want to go, I'll get another ticket. Thanks, Chuck. I don't know if it's the answer. I can't keep running. successfully eluded the police of California, Oregon, and Nevada. And on Saturday night, December 30th, he finally reached Las Vegas. She wasn't at that joint where she was singing. She checked out. I don't know, Mike. How should I know? Where is she, you think? You go after that damn and you lost everything up. He'll just blow your top. <coughs> where is she? Mike, don't do nothing. The cops will find you. Why? Are you going to tell them I'm here? <laughs> me? Well, no. Why should I? Mike, listen to me. Listen. Chuck's got everything all set up. You're going to get your cut just like you figured. You don't have to do a thing. You... You're going to tell me? Or do you want some more? Mike, all that go. You're going to kill the whole camp, are you? <laughs> no. No, don't do it, Mike. Don't do it. I... I'll tell you. I'm waiting. There's, there's a joint stagecoach in right near the California border. Wheeler took her up there to help us. Okay. Go back to your bottle. <laughs> Daryl, stop here. Your... Uh -huh. uh Sunday morning, December 31st. Because Steve and Ann were at church, Vi Victor took a chance on going up the hill to see Wheeler. What are you doing up here? I didn't sleep all night. Afraid to breathe too loud? Yes. Think any more about that other ticket from Mexico? That and a lot of things. What are we letting ourselves in for? Why worry about it? I meant when this is over. What will we be? Look, you want to start clean in Mexico? You start clean in Mexico. Sure. Drunk all year and Santa Claus on Christmas. Who would we be kidding? You're scared. You want out of the deal. No. What's going to happen to those kids when the job is over? Oh, come on. We've got our own troubles. I don't want them hurt. You picked a fine time to get religion. Steve and Anna have had it a long time. Look, all that's going to happen is they're tied up. By the time they're found, we'll be in Los Angeles and in the clear. I had to know. Maybe this is a good time to start convincing you about Mexico. First it was Dare, and then it was Mike, then it was Dare. And... I'm not ready to ask for any more trouble. How do you know? That's all, Chuck. All right. You can have it any way you want it. But just don't try to keep me out of the deal. You know what would happen. Someday you'll kill Mike or he'll kill you. 
we had anything together would end there. things now? The closer we get to Tuesday morning, the more I feel like I'm falling apart. Sure, it's beginning to get me too. But just remember that tomorrow always takes care of itself. Keep thinking about now and you're in. No past, no future, just now. I wish it were that easy. Nobody knows what's coming up next. Nobody's even got the right to guess. How do you like the party? Why? Wonderful, and just hey, wonderful. Hey, you're wasting lots of time. If you're sober, come on, yeah, get happy. Yeah, the party. <laughs> They're lucky kids. They've got the world by the tail. And this broken down joint? They think it's great. Nothing else matters. That's what makes them lucky. Nothing else matters but the two of them. Well, if you listen to Steve so much, why don't you listen to him now? Come on, you're wasting a lot of time. Get happy. All right. Let's try to find something to be happy about. Hello, Joe. I've been waiting for you. It's about time you showed up. Cops are turning everything inside out looking for you. You can't hang around here. <laughs> you want to chase me right out of town, eh, Joe? What's the matter? Am I fouling things up for you and my wife? What's that mean? Suppose we have a little talk while you drive me where I want to go. You're crazy. I'm not driving you anywhere. Why not? Any friend of I should be a friend of yours. And the cops ain't looking for you. Where are we going? The stagecoach in. That's where she is. Or maybe she'd rather not see the two of us together. If you louse up this... You job, just drive I'm... like I said. And don't go so fast we get a cop on our tail. You got to straight now. You better know what you're doing, Bennett. Don't worry. Let's go. Hey, you're hitting bottom. You ready for another one? You rush things. You always rush things. Okay. How far are you? About 30 miles. Never thought I'd know about you and Bly, huh? You weren't very careful, Joe. Things get around. In the pen you hear everything you ought to hear. Bly was divorcing you. It's open season on her. She's why you broke out. You're cracked. She wants no party. Got a lot of answers, haven't you, Joe? But nobody ever had an answer for one of these. Smart, real smart. Like every other trigger-happy con. Shut up. You're tying to something you can't think out, the first thing you do is reach for your rod. Darren! What are you gonna do, knock off every guy who wants it? If I do, you won't be around to know about it. Well, you cheap hood, you can't push Joe Darren around. That's enough. <laughs>
Steve, how's the Scott situation? Why? Bye wants to catch up with us. Well, now that's the old fighting spirit. Well, the devil? Sure. I have to get twice as happy. How's that for living just for today? You're getting the idea. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Give us a song. That should wake everyone up. I don't want the party to die before midnight. Sure. All I need is a dime for the juice box. Sing something they'd understand even in Mexico. Always rushing things. Clear the decks, everybody. Vi's gonna sing a song. Romance, huh? She's lonely, Steve. 
Chuck. Yeah? There's so many things we have to talk about. Like whether Mexico is a good place to get married? It could be very nice. Like a woman, huh, Vibe? Lock the door and leave a window open. You had to do it, huh, Mike? You had to come after her. You couldn't let things go until after the job was done. Close the door, Chuck. You're standing in a draft. I don't want you to catch cold. Shut it. Why did you come here? You know, I thought it was just you and Darren. Now it's Wheeler. You don't miss a trick, do you, kid? So long as it's a pair of pants with money in the pockets. That's for you, huh? Leave her alone, Mike. She told you she's through with you. She said she wants a divorce. And I intend to see that she gets it. I thought you were smarter than that, Chuck. But I guess as long as it's her, there are no smart guys. Your being here won't change anything. Chuck and I are going to Mexico. If we still feel the way we do now, we'll be married. You can't stop it. What a bet. Mike, you're up your rocker. I've already killed Largo and Darren. You what? Two more won't make any difference. I needed Largo for the job. Oh. Just move, Chuck. Oh. Now, Mike, two million bucks. All the sweating and planning. <laughs> Inside. Just in time for a drink with us, boys. What do you have? No, thanks, Ann. We're working. Found a guy on the highway with a bullet in his head. Nothing's turned up around here, has it? No, we've just been having a party. Anybody tried to rent a cabin tonight? No, but if anything happens, we'll let you know right away. Okay, keep your eyes open. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah. They're coming out. Concerning the murdered man found on the highway is that he has been identified as Joe Darren, a well-known... They found him. That's why the cops are coming around. You fixed up everything great. First Largo, then Darren, and now the cops are putting on the heat. I'm calling the whole thing off. You're not calling off anything. I'm taking Largo's place. We're gonna hit the truck like we planned. Nobody knows I'm here, and nobody has to know until Tuesday morning. Okay. We all want the dough, and that's the only way to get it. This doesn't wash out anything, Wheeler. We'll do the job. But only one of us is going to be able to spend that money. You're so right. Don't plan too far ahead. We'll do the job Tuesday. On schedule. <laughs> The long New Year's weekend brought one of the biggest spending sprees in the history of Las Vegas. Money poured into the hotels, the gambling casinos, filling the bank vaults with unprecedented amounts of cash, which would be sent to the Los Angeles Federal Reserve Bank on the United Transport Company's armored car. Tuesday morning, January 2nd, 
the armored car began its fateful trip to Los Angeles. Specially constructed for its job, its armor plate was the thickest. Its guards were skilled in the use of many types of weapons. It used an elaborate two-way radio hookup, working with top secret code. Its cargo of money was one of the largest ever transported. In short, this armored car had been built to be an impregnable fortress of steel, muscle, and guns to guarantee that its shipments of money got where they were going. This was to be the actual scene of the robbery. Nothing had happened that could upset the schedule. Normal breakfast traffic had moved in and then left. The coast was clear. By Victor, Wheeler and Mike Bennett were ready to move with split second precision. For Chuck Wheeler, paperwork, talk and theory were over. This was the one time his high powered rifle must not miss. Personal passions and hatreds were forgotten. Mike Bennett concentrated only on his end of the job. Important now was the one goal, the armored car. Mike Bennett began his first move at 11.36. I didn't see your car drive up. Want some breakfast? Just some coffee, please. Okay. Don't make a sound. What? Oh, what? Down on the floor. Down if you don't want to get hurt. Down! <laughs> At 11.43 on schedule, the armored car would pass the stagecoach in. Hi. Hi. Is there something for you? My car stalled outside. I thought you could take a look at it. Oh, sure. <laughs> It was 11.40. In three minutes, the armored car would reach the stagecoach inn. Each moment counted now. The weapons had to be as ready as were the men who would use them. 11.42. Tension grew for Vi and the others as the time grew shorter. The final seconds were ticking away, and now it was 11.43. The time had come. Better notify the check-in at Baker. Tell them we're at the uh, stagecoach inn. We'll be about 10 minutes late. Call him Baker. Call him Baker. You guys nearly had it. Can I help you any? Go ahead, Got a schedule to meet. Go Can ahead, you change this tire in a hurry? Sure, run her inside. We'll use the big jack.
take care of the tire. I'll get the girl. What are you doing with Steve? He and his wife are the only ones who know what we look like. Jack, you're not going to hurt them. Why? Listen. No, nothing can happen to them. You can't. I'll take care of him. You get his wife. We're wasting time. Mike, no! Mike, don't be a sucker. We can't take a chance on any more shots being heard. I'll take care of them both in the woods with a silencer. All right, hurry up. We're late now. I'll get my car. Jack, no! Please! Please! Jack! Shouting! I'm not going with you. I want to get out of here. Started to go to pieces, I had to hit her. She's in the truck. Leave her alone, she's all right. If you're not gonna take him and his wife out, I will. All right, give me a hand. of the robbery had been completed. There were no witnesses who could identify the criminals. The only things that stood between them and the final payoff were the check-in stations at the various towns along the route. If the tape-recorded voices of the armored car guards went undetected, then the crime would reach a successful conclusion. Calling cars 41 and 17. Calling cars 41 and 17. Check drunk disorderly at Bankhead Hotel. Drunk disorderly, Bankhead Hotel. Calling car 13, 801 7th and Market. Repeat, 801 7th and Market. Proceed at once, car 13. Calling cars 41 and 17. Repeat, check drunk disorderly at Bankhead Hotel. No alarm. Check-in works to Baker. We're good all the way to L.A. Better work. United calling 42X. United calling 42X. Go ahead, United. Coming into Baker. Schedule 902. Did you hear that? He checked in as 902. So? United notified us they were changing their code as of January the 1st. It's the second already. And they're still checking through with last year's signals. I want to see that truck. Stall it until I can notify all points. Schedule 902, check. Schedule 902, check. Check. Road clear through to Barstow. OK, 42X. We'll maintain speed. Schedule 473, return. Schedule 473, return. 42X going off. That's it, we're in. Now we can stay with the cop calls all the way to Boston. Nevada and California police and sheriff stations went into immediate action on receiving the report. With more than $2 million at stake, the law enforcement agencies could afford to take no chances. All units are authorized to stop the United Transport truck on contact. Repeat, all units are authorized to... There'll be roadblocks. We'll never get through. So what do we do now? Let's go back to the stagecoach in, get my car, and try to make it through the hills.
truck said it was stopping to change a tire at the Stagecoach Inn. Maybe we ought to check that through. I'll get the nearest cruisers over there right away. into something, lady, and you won't be getting out of it. Where's Steve and Ann? Where are they? You killed them. Take a look, Dave. I thought you said he killed them. What's going on with you two? Vi! I'm so sorry, Vi. I'm so terribly sorry. All Chuck did was fire in the air. He didn't want to kill us. I would have liked to thank you. Look, she tried to save us. You tell them that, won't you? They'll find out everything anyhow. They always do. Okay, lady. But perhaps, in a way, Chuck Wheeler had been right. There can't be a tomorrow for those who live only for today. Yes, this is an armored car, specially constructed for its job. It does that job.